a little red light comes on, then it was a success. Oh, oh, so What's up everybody? I hope you're having a great day and thanks for tuning in. A couple things you might notice that are different about this video. One, I'm trying to use the lav mic again. Two, I think I figured out the autofocus on this camera so it's not so blurry in and out. I think it looks a little bit better. And three, I don't look dead tired. I finally got a little bit of a good night's sleep. I have less bags under my eyes. My goal with this video is to combine a little bit of electronics with some of the CAD and 3D modeling that I did in the last video. In the last video, it'll be linked somewhere around here. You can see how I made a camera mount that fits over my computer. You can maybe see part of it over here. Now for the device that I'm actually making, let me give you a little bit of backstory. One of my favorite things to do when I get off of work and after going to the gym is coming home and playing Rocket League, more specifically with my best friend Austin. I think of Rocket League as one of the best ways to relax. God damn it. Fuck. We'll just be playing. Our rotations are perfect. He's only backflipping about half of the time. Ah. And we're slowly moving up in ranks to get to champ level or at least in standards when one of our better friends can carry us. However, there's a frequent unfortunate occurrence that happens that causes our gameplay to just plummet. My friends and I refer to this occurrence as the dreaded Duke Duke. The Duke Duke we're referring to is actually Austin's headphones dying. He has the Razer Man of Wars and the last 10 minutes or so of battery life a constant doot doot sound happens that just drives him insane. Obviously when he's in the middle of a game we can't lose communications so he's stuck listening to that sound ah! constantly and it drives him insane. Nothing goes well. What I'd like to do to fix his issue and thus our Rocket League team's issue is make a device in which it charges his headset instinctually every time he takes it off. To do this my plan is to get a wireless charger similar to this one, rip the insides out and put it into a 3D modeled hook that clamps on the edge of his desk so every time he takes off his headset, he hangs it on it and it charges his headset. Now this sounds easy enough, however his headset is not wireless charging enabled. Therefore, I have to make it wireless charging enabled. So I need to put a receiver for the wireless charger inside the headband of his headset. Mine is still wired because I'm poor and I've been using this since I was 15 playing Rust YY No Scope. In order to get started on this project, first I have to order the parts. Wireless charger pad. Cheap, 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 cheap. Okay, this one doesn't look too bad. 10 watts. It should work. Add to cart. Just realized I had dark mode on. This will work. Okay. All right, I guess these parts are good enough. As soon as they get here, I can take the dimensions of the board and the coil inside the wireless charger and model a clip that can actually fit them. As soon as they come in, I can start doing that. <laughs> All right, they're here. First step is to take this apart and cut the insides. I'm just guessing the thickness, but if the headset is about this big, that wouldn't be too terrible if the whole thing... I think I know what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna start up CAD and just measure as I go and I'll see if I can get it done. However, same shtick as last time, while I still have a little bit of daylight, I'm gonna need to run to Hobby Lobby real quick to get some fabric that I can cover the top of the headrest with where the receiver's gonna be. So it's not gonna bug him and he's not gonna wanna take it off and ruin more Rocket League games. <laughs> okay, the camera died again and filming these videos takes longer than I thought, but going to Hobby Lobby yesterday was a success. I got strong Velcro, black stretchy material that I can use, measure down later and cut it to size for the headset, and some fabric glue. I don't know if I'm gonna need this, maybe super glue will be good enough, but I got it just in case, like four bucks. Okay, so now I have all the parts that I need for the headset. I'm gonna jump into CAD now and create the clamp. I'm gonna make sure to oversize it this time so I don't run into the same problem that I had last video. I think I'm finally gonna get a chance to use this, what I made last video, properly. I'm gonna wanna get it printing as fast as possible and while it's doing that, I can show you how I'm gonna extend the leads on the actual receiver coil so it'll fit to the... I'll explain it later, let's just jump into CAD.
that's right. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, probably not. But in this, since it's only used for power, there's only two cables in it. There's just, you can see the seams of them running up the sides. So this might be easier than I thought. No going back now. Okay, so after destroying the first one, I was able to solder extensions onto the little board onto there. A little red light comes on when I put the pad on, then it was a success. Oh, 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 so deep. Okay, we finished up about all the electronics. Now it's time to check the 3D print. I think one thing I need to do just so like the headset when it sits on this doesn't get in the way is maybe make some sort of drill a hole here that's big enough for the head to fit through. You can, you can change it, you can hold it. Um, that's maybe the most important thing. keep it or not so when I put this here you should see a little red light oh, oh we got a charging so I thought I had double-sided tape but turns out I don't have any so I'm just hoping that the friction force of this is enough to keep it in place <laughs> 